Well, that made pretty short work of these soda jugs. That seemed extremely effective. So what was the very powerful gun I was using? A Marlin 30-30. And the ammo? Federal 150 grain soft point ammo. Nothing you'd ever call special. The 30-30 might be the most underestimated rifle caliber there is. Now shooting those jugs was pretty fun. Let's shoot something else. Well, that was really impressive. Now, if you've ever shot pumpkins, you know they're mainly hollow. Even if you shoot them with a powerful rifle, it basically just puts a hole in them. So how is the 3030 able to magically blow these pumpkins all to bits? Because they were all filled with orange soda. But now let's get serious about shooting this rifle. Now, when I say a 3030 is greatly underestimated, I could bore you for an hour with anecdotes to make my point. But let me tell you just two. One, when I was 12 years old, I went deer hunting with a 3030 rifle very similar to this one. Now, side note, when I say deer hunting, that's eh, a bit of a misnomer. We never shot a deer, never shot at a deer, never saw a deer. When I was 13, 14, 15 years old, I was starting to think that deer hunting was akin to snipe hunting. But that's another story. Anyway, we're on the way back from deer hunting. We're in the car, and I look out across this farmer's field, and I see a coyote out there. Now, it's private property. We're not going to go shoot it, but... I made the comment if I could shoot that coyote from here. And one of the adults in the group told me, Oh no, Paul, that coyote's really far away. You'd need more than just your 3030. You'd need more like a 30 6 or a 270 to shoot that coyote from here. Okay. That coyote was about 60 yards away. How far did he think a 3030 would shoot? Now let me tell you another anecdote. Man comes to me one day and wants me to help him sight in his rifle. Okay, the rifle in question is a Winchester Model 1894 3030. And he tells me that he'd bought it, used, and he'd had it for a while, and he'd taken it out deer hunting that morning. He had never fired the rifle before. Okay, well, that's your first mistake, going hunting with a rifle that you haven't sighted in. But anyway, what he tells me is that there was a deer, he shot at it twice and missed both times. And he explains to me that he's not really good at estimating distance, but he figured the deer was about 70 yards away, so he aimed a foot over the deer's back. Now remember, you don't want to hit the deer in the top of the back, you want to hit it about halfway down, and there's differences of opinion on where to shoot it, but still, about halfway down. And for a deer, that's going to be, give or take, on the size of the deer, about 8 inches, and then a foot over the deer's back, so he expected the bullet to drop 20 inches? in a 70-yard shot? All right. Well, that brings up the question, how far will a 30-30 bullet drop at a given distance? Let's see if we can shed some light on that. So let's start with shooting this target right here at 50 yards. Well, I got one flyer, but that's me. But it looks like at 50 yards, we're dead on point of aim, point of impact. Now let's shoot at 100 and see how much it drops. Now I'll go back to the 100 yard line and I'll still aim dead center and we'll see how much drop there is.
So how'd we do? No observable drop at all. Now, depending on atmospheric conditions, bullet weight, brand of ammunition, barrel length, by textbook you're going to get one to five inches of drop at 100 yards. But in this case, with these 150 grain bullets, no observable drop at all. And I think we can agree that the drop certainly wasn't 20 inches. This target also shows us something else. A lot of people will say that lever action rifles in general, and 3030s specifically, are not accurate. Looks okay to me. So it would seem that the drop you get at distance from a 3030 is not as much as people perceive it to be. But how much drop do you get and what really is the maximum effective range of a 3030? Well, that's going to depend on you and your rifle and what ammunition you're using. But for me, with the 150 grain bullets I typically use, I feel really good out to 150 yards. Beyond that, not so much. But what about the power of a 3030? Well, I can tell you this, I've hunted elk with a 3030, and the short version is, don't do it. 3030 is really good for deer. Now some people will dissent from that opinion, and I'll hear anecdotes where someone will say he had to shoot a deer five times with his 3030 to kill it. Okay, well in the last few years I've actually had quite a bit of success at deer hunting, and I have not used a 3030 very much, but when I have, the results have been four shots, four hits, four dead deer. So when someone tells me he had to shoot a deer five times to kill it with a 3030, the only thing I can say is, you must have been shooting him wrong. Now as far as the accuracy of these rifles, we've seen the accuracy doesn't seem to be too bad. But part of that reputation for poor accuracy comes from the sights that are typical on guns like this. To adjust this sight for windage, you hit it with a mallet, it's just dovetailed in there. And most of these rifles don't have reference points on the barrel, so you just have to kind of guess and go by trial and error. Well, that's what I had to do with this, and it took a long time to get it sighted in. And the real problem is that if this sight gets hit hard enough and knocked out of alignment, you might not see that it is. And something I've done to combat this is, in my range bag, I just keep some nail polish. And I'll use this nail polish like sealing wax, and I'll put it around there. And so, if it gets knocked out of alignment, that seal is broken. And at least you'll see that it's out of alignment. Just something I've learned over the years. So, as always, don't try this at home. I'm what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the 3030 video.